But you didn't get me down here just to watch this private flying display. I had it transferred here especially. I thought you might like to see things for yourself at first hand. Or do you mean see things your way? Especially as Wilder seems to be setting you up as an authority on my aircraft in the House of Commons. Well, don't forget, I was a pilot. I know all about her performance. Yes, but only from handouts. all that about? That's the last time. I don't want you anywhere near this aircraft. You said that before, Mr. Corbett, but Mr. Wilder... John overruled. Wilder's not here. But after this, even he'll agree with me. I'm not risking years of work through your incompetence. You know as well as I do, the stability is critical. Don't blame the aircraft. Very well, Mr. Corbett. It was my fault. It won't happen again. You're damn right it won't. I've met all of Wilder's yes-men around here by now. Don't forget, Wilder's got what you need and didn't have. Scott Furlong production facilities. And politicians. He's rushing things. He wants quantity production now. And the personal kudos that goes with it. And what do you want? You know there's another year's development work on the airplane. Well, don't tell me a production contract gets in the way of that. It's wasteful. At this stage, it's not your worry. It is if 20 production of VTOLs turn out to be obsolete instead of just a handful of prototypes. Well, what's wrong with the VTOL then? Nothing. It's as good as anything being made anywhere. But give me a year with the four prototypes and we'll have a world beater. Well, can't you do your development work on the 20 production models? Yes. But at a million each, that's 20 million pounds down the drain. Don't let your board hear you say that. You're the first man I've come across in this industry who hasn't fallen over himself for a government contract. I want a contract, but for another year's development work. And then a production contract to follow. Negotiated by you and not by John Wilder, is that what you mean? I mean just what I said. You take it as you like. Uh, I'm afraid Wilder's too far committed now. No damage done. Oh, it would have been quick enough to spot it if there had been. Look, I've come down a lot harder than that often enough. Not what I've been watching, Douglas. But she's designed for it. She'd take a lot more than that to do any real damage. Mechanical failure is one thing. Pilot error is another. All right, let's face it. She's a difficult one to fly. We're the experts, aren't we? Look, you've banged her down and I've banged her down. What do you think some raw service pilot's going to do with her? There's a lot of improvement needed yet. Yes, yeah, she still is a difficult one to fly. Stability bothers me. Yes, the auto stabilizer is not right, but Corbett knows this well enough. The human element he'll never understand. Mr. Clifford, please. Just a minute. Clifford, David Corbett. You doing anything this evening? Well, not now. I'd rather talk about it later. You know the red line near my place? Eight o'clock? Till then. Bye. Send Fraser in. Yes, Mr. Corbett. I've been looking at these draft layouts of yours for the new production line, Fraser. You fairly got off the mark, didn't you? <laughs> my name is Mudd at home. My wife says she hasn't seen me for a week. Well, don't end up in the divorce courts, will you? Been putting your head together with Wilder's works manager, have you? Oh, no, that's all mine. He's been trying to get together, but we were told to do separate ones. So you thought you'd get in first, is that it? It's only a draft, Mr. Corbett. I can see that. And there are Sugden's mistakes all over it. From what he was saying the other day, 
Here. What's the rear fuselage assembly line doing way out there? Well, that's where it's located now. Well, what's to stop you moving it? It means a big move. We've got time for big moves. I expect you to straighten out his mistakes and I'll come to terms with them. Well, what about structural alterations, Mr. Corbett? There's a wall there that will have to come out and a couple of stanchions that would be in the way. How long will that take? Put two or three weeks on the job. You know how much time we'd save once we were in production? If we take too long, won't Wilder do it Sugden's way? You let me worry about that. Bob, we've got Wilder telling us when to build it. Sugden telling us how. Henderson telling us how to sell it. Before long, Forbes will be telling us how to fly the thing. Not after this morning, eh? Has that memo gone off to Forbes yet? Half an hour ago, as soon as you signed it. Don't let them rush you, Fraser. You've got too much at stake. Douglas, listen to this. From Mr. D. Corbett to me, copy to Mr. Bradley. Pending the rearrangement of the current flight test program, Mr. Forbes will no longer be actively concerned with VTOL test flying. Mr. Bradley will now work direct for the aerodynamic flight test department. New flight test schedules will be made for the VTOL project subject to my approval. Never heard anything like it. Uh, Mr. Bradley, please. Uh, Mr. Corbett, please. Very impertinent, isn't it? I make the flight test schedules and I name the pilots. It's Forbes here. I want to speak to Mr. Corbett. I'm sorry, Mr. Forbes. He's gone for the afternoon. Very well. I'll see him in the morning. Until I do, the flight test schedules remain exactly as they are. I don't see what you stand to gain by it. There's no question of gain. It's plain common sense. A production contract's premature and wasteful. Well, you should worry. You'll be the first to go for us if we chuck millions of pounds of public money down the drain. Yeah, happy for me to go ahead and publish. Happy? No. But you should. On the conditions we've just agreed. I've never disclosed a source yet, Mr. Corbett. If I had any doubts about that, we wouldn't be here. Would you like another? Yes, thanks. Any idea how you handle it? Well, it fits in with the line that Eric Stiles is taking in Parliament. Eric Stiles? Is he the one who never stops sounding off about defence extravagance? All the ministry boys go on sick leave when he gets on his feet. What's he like? I've never met him. All right, keep clear if I were you. Uh, pint, please. Hand it to Mark. <coughs> well, if ever you get fed up with Fleet Street, come and see us. Our public relations department needs men like you. With Wilder there, not on your life. Wilder can't go on forever. But it can only be Styles. Who else? He's been talking his head off. Uh, Styles has climbed on the bandwagon, but who started it rolling? At least one aviation expert very close to the VTOL project believes another year's development work will make all the difference between a moderately successful aircraft and a world beater. That's not Eric Styles talking. Somebody in the ministry log rolling while Wilder's away. Mm, or someone inside the company. My dear James, when you've been involved in Scott Furlong's parliamentary lobbying for as long as I have, you'll know there's only one man in the company capable of this sort of thing. John Wilder. And it can't be him. And what makes you think he's anyone in the ministry? Uh, if you weren't so opposed to gambling, Gerald, I'd give you odds it's Corbett. <laughs> Rubbish. That's exactly what Wilder would say if you were here. No, I'll have no part in any witch hunt. I suggest it's your duty as an MP to reassure the minister. What, if this is true, the aircraft does need another year? I know it doesn't. Ah, that's Wilder's view, not Corbett's. What do you know about Corbett's view? Uh, we met yesterday. And what he told me was that, almost word for word. Well, if Corbett believes that, he should have gone to the board through the proper channels. But what proper channels has he that Wilder won't block? Well, that still doesn't excuse his going direct to the press, if indeed he has, but... I don't see what Corbett has to gain from not having a production contract. If it's awarded now, it's Wilder's. If it's awarded later, it could be his.
If this is just another newspaper story, I don't think the board will take it too seriously, but if Corbett's behind it, it's another matter. And he'd better be stopped by us mm -hmm. before John Wilder comes back and does it himself. Imagine that. Well, isn't it up to you to face him with it? You're on the controlling board. I'm not. You'd be prepared to involve yourself. Of course. Of course. No, James, on second floor... You'd I... prefer not to be involved. Not until I'm convinced there's more to this than mere coincidence. Hmm. Well, leave it to Wilder to see to then. And why aren't they ready? When I order new flight schedules, I expect them the same day. You weren't available yesterday afternoon. The orders were clear enough. Your memo was clear enough, Mr. Corbett. I take my orders from Mr. Wilder. Yes. Put him on. Good morning, Sir Gerald. Yes, I was wondering, Corbett, if you could find time to come up and see me. I'll look in the diary. I mean today, this morning. I'm sorry, Sir Gerald. Today is right out of the question. Well, it's a matter of some importance. Well, I could see you here if it's convenient. No, no, I have a meeting. Well, tomorrow, then. No, that's too late. Look, I've got Mr. Cameron Grant with me here at the moment, and we wondered if... I can't leave here today. Well, you've seen this morning's globe, have you? Yes, I did, Sir Gerald. Very well, then. As long as I can get away by three, let's see if we start now. You could be here by twelve. Till then. Bye. As far as the Beatle is concerned, Forbes, you are responsible to me. You had no right to tell Bradley to take no action on those orders. No right to be near that aircraft this morning. So, Bradley, you can get together with AFT and let me have those schedules by mid-afternoon. I'm chief test pilot of the group. And I'm responsible to the managing director of the group. You're placing me in an impossible position, Mr. Corbett. Do you intend to get my schedules out today? We've had two sets of orders, yours and Mr. Wilde. And which one will you carry out? There's no question of Bradley. which one. It's very difficult. Where's the difficulty? The schedules must remain exactly as they are if we are not to upset the entire program. You almost if... did just that in ten seconds flat the other day. Very well, Mr. Corbett. We'll make the schedules as you want them. Right. Until Mr. Wilder gets back. Forbes, I didn't want Bradley to hear this. But don't you think you're getting a bit past it? This type of aircraft, I mean. Yes. I must say, I wondered who he was. But then, there are more aviation experts these days than copies of this newspaper. Close to the VTOL project? There are less of those. A hundred or so might qualify, though. We met yesterday. So we did. And you were less than enthusiastic yourself about this production contract. Words, Grant, like these. And what you're saying is they don't mean anything? They mean more to you politicians than they do to a mere aircraft designer. You worry me, Corbett. You seem determined to be uncooperative. I am. Well, you know why we've come down this morning, I think. Only too clearly. Well, we came in an attempt to find some solution to all this. And to seek some reassurance that you weren't, well, even remotely connected with this extremely malicious report. We came because what you told me yesterday and what this aviation expert is quoted as saying here are identical. Am I wrong in thinking that you are on Scott Furlong's payroll? My public relations company has a contract with Scott Furlong. Ah, so you felt you had to put Sir Gerald on the set. Oh, Grant thought it is duty. Oh, duty? No, 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 no. Oh, my company has a contract and I have a parliamentary seat. You could call that self-protection. Tell me, Grant, how on earth do you reconcile the two? Your contract says you back the veto. Your voters say their money should be spent wisely. Ah, uh, you're not yet a politician. We know the art of compromise. What I know is down there. The art of building airplanes. The veto. Well, do you think I want to throw it away now? You wouldn't be throwing it away, would you? Hmm? You'd be getting a further development contract instead of Wilder's production contract. With a production contract to come later, when it suits you. Look, all we want is an assurance that you're not behind us. I'd have thought what you wanted was an admission that I am. Well, are you? Have Sir Gerald's car brought round, would you please? Yes. 
Grant has made an error, Sir Gerald. Oh, an understandable one. But an error all the same. You must look elsewhere. I'm sorry, I can't go into that. That's classified information. Well, if I'm going to make anything of this follow-up, it's got to be fresh and specific. Well, it's an open secret that it's a difficult aircraft to fly at present. Oh, well, nothing more specific than that. What about the stability of the aircraft? I hear you've been having trouble with that. Where did you get that from? I never disclose a source. No. Well, I can't deny it. Well, how long to get it right? That's just the point. It could take weeks. We'll find the answer. We need the time. Oh, weeks? That's nothing like a year. When you have a series of minor snags, it isn't how long each one takes. It's the cumulative effect. Have you heard of anything about the low-level radar? You're having trouble with that? Well, some people would say that we're due for some. Well, how low does this radar let you fly safely? You know the Official Secrets Act as well as I do. I don't see how you can possibly be specific without landing us both in the Tower of London. Anyway, I thought your politician chums would give you all the follow-up material you needed. Well, Eric Stiles has given me enough quotes for a week, but they're scarcely what you'd call hard quotes. They're too general. That's the trouble with politicians. Incidentally, he's been trying very hard to find out who you are. Well, as long as you don't tell him. Well, he's taking this very seriously. He's already got a group of MPs together. The Anti-Defense Brigade? Not all of them, by any means. Your people haven't exactly been idle. I hear your chairman visited the minister this afternoon. Straight after seeing me. To think, I shook the hand that shook the hand. Yes, well, we've started something. And if it isn't to die the death, Eric Stiles has got to get his hands on some hard facts. Yes, that's all very well, Eric, but you'll need more than gossip to make anything stick. Well, don't worry, James, I'll get it. From Clifford's alleged aviation expert, you mean? Perhaps. Uh, you've been in this business long enough that it probably doesn't exist. Eric, you remember that Wigmore business three years ago? I'll never forget your face as we got you up in the house to withdraw your statement. At once in 11 years. Oh, this is different. You're just as wide open. No, you're being paid to make me think I am. You're doing a grand job, James, but I am not going to let it drop. Not for you or the minister or Wilder or anybody. And what if I assure you that there's absolutely nothing wrong with the VTOL? I wouldn't believe you, old chap. Sir Gordon saw the minister today. Yes, I know. I'm not surprised. I asked him to get the minister's consent to your seeing the current progress reports on the VTOL, which are top secret. I can just see the old devil agreeing to that. He did. Hmm. Yeah. It's um, an abstract of technical information. Test schedules, production estimates, and so on. All the stuff you want me to see. No, 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 no. It's all there, good and bad. If you want to go on, there's some ammunition for you. It's a justified risk for Scott Furlong, though, because you'll see there's no more than usual teasing trouble. To take away? Yes, please, we'll just sign. It'll take as long as you like reading it. It's a company copy. When you finish, see, they get it back, that's all. I'll go through it, Jeff. Every word, every figure. Well, if you want any help with it, ask that aviation expert. So long, James. I'll call you if I want any more. Right. I am sorry, Scotty. I never thought it would take as long as that. Oh, I was too early anyway. Can I buy you a drink? Thanks. I'll stay on the brandy. Ah, uh, brandy. Uh, well, tell me, how's the freelancing going? Oh, well, you won't get me back to staff reporting. I should have done this years ago. Yeah? When are you taking over Reuters? <laughs> Sex papers is enough. Oh. Now, what's this about? Huh? Well... Come in, Forbes. Well, what are you waiting for? This is a copy of a cable I've sent to Mr. Wilder. Ah, yes? Do you want me to read it to you? Well, that's up to you, isn't it? Yes. New schedules ordered for VTOL flight test program. Now leave flying in hands of Bradley. Stop. We urgently request your clarification and ruling. Stop. 
Signed you. I've got Bradley's new test schedule here. They should work pretty well. Yes. Your chief test pilots around here. Have you checked them? I helped to prepare them. I am glad you're making yourself useful. Yes. Call to Mr. Styles, Mr. Corbett. Put him through. Mr. Styles? David Corbett here. You've been saying some pretty hard things about my aeroplane. You want me to stop, is that it? I want you to know what you're talking about, that's all. I wondered if you'd like to come down here and see the VTOL. Whenever you like, Mr. Corbett. Uh, tomorrow too soon? Well, if you're in a hurry, I could lay it on for this afternoon. Yes, yes, yes that's all right. I can, uh, I can get away. Uh, 4.30, do Till then. Goodbye. Get on to security, will you? I want an immediate clearance for Styles. He's coming down here this afternoon. And then come in and take a memo. What do they say? He's phoning back. Not next week, I hope. Right. Letter to Sir Gordon Ravage, copy to Sir Gerald Merle. I have taken the liberty... Facetious? It is to Sir Gordon. All right, I have taken the opportunity of inviting Eric Stiles down here this afternoon to see the VTOL. I hope to show him what a fine aircraft it is and what a real aviation expert knows about it, subject to his security status, of course. Should there be more? Have them delivered by hand immediately. I want them to get them before 4.30. Oh, she doesn't look too bad from the outside. No, I'll give you that. Can I uh, take a look at the cockpit? Out of bounds, I'm afraid. It's your security classification. I'm an MP. They're only clear to top secret on a need-to-know basis. Well, who decides what I need to know? I do. The well, minister's not worried, you know. Neither is Grant. They're not building the aircraft. What's Grant got to do with it, anyway? He fixed me up with a very useful file today, with the minister's approval. What file? All the ministry data on your aircraft, Mr. Corbett. I thought you wanted to show me this aeroplane anyway. I'm showing it to you. There it is. What else do you want to know? Or is it all in the file? It's uh, very comprehensive. You'll know something of the minor snags we've been hitting then. And some of them aren't so small, eh? Well, if you're talking about the stability problem, that's true. We'll get over that. When? Oh, you don't expect me to stick my neck out like that. Who knows? Well, it's your aeroplane, isn't it? Well, that's what people keep telling me. Perhaps we could talk a little more freely if you'll come to my office. Can I get you a drink, Mr. Stiles? Well, that's very nice. I thought you never touched it. I don't. It slows down the mind. Well, I'll slow down with the scotch, sir. With some water. Do you do much flying? I'll get around a bit. Ever been over Mac 1? If you're uh, trying to get me up in that thing, no thanks very much. Oh, I think I'll wait till you get it right. Oh, that won't take long. Probably before we could get security clearance on you anyway. <laughs> you know, uh, you chaps can use uh, security as a form of censorship, and you do. At least I'm showing you all I can. It's not very much all the same, Mr. Corbett. Ask me what you like. I'll see if I'm at liberty to answer. All right. Well, what about this uh, stability? Yes? Uh, it, it's, it's fundamental, isn't it? 
crucial until we get it right. Only a really experienced pilot can fly it, of course. And that could take months? Oh, I wouldn't put it as high as that. Of course, on the VTOL, it's a special problem is to do with its hovering attitude, which you don't get with conventional aircraft. Now, what about these lift engines? Ah, you've been mugging up on that special piece in Flight Magazine last month. <laughs> I saw it, yes, but I do happen to know that you're having particular trouble here. Well, don't use that in your campaign. We could prove you out of date. Now, what about the undercarriage? Uh, this is according to the file I got from Grant. Some of these ministry chaps are not too happy about its fatigue life. You ask me to be frank. Well, it's a design problem. And at the moment, I'm not happy with it either. Yes, but what does that mean? It's, it's a, a month, three months, six months? We'll keep asking for these specific times. There's no such thing. It was not even an estimate. The estimate's classified information. I thought you were going to be frank. If you'll guarantee not to use this, about a month. I imagine you're adding all these times up, Mr. Stiles. Getting a cumulative time. Yes. Yeah. Yes, obviously. Excuse me. Yes? Press call, Mr. Corbett. Not the globe, I trust. No, it's the sir. Well, put them through to the PR. I don't want to speak to anyone. I suppose they've been giving you hell ever since this story broke. Well, we're as thick-skinned as they are. Oh, this time does add up, doesn't it? A week here, month there. As they say in the courts, they run concurrently. Yes, but not all of them, surely. No, you've got a point. So it would be fair to say that you need an, well, an extra year. Oh, come now. You don't expect me to say that. <coughs> Damn. Yes? Sorry to interrupt you. I said no calls. It's a Joe no. Oh, all right, put him on. You just got my note about you being here. <laughs> well, I'll leave you to it. Now, after all, there's no parliamentary privilege here. You're very considerate. Show Mr. Stiles to his car, please. I hope I've put you on the right track. Well, let's say it's all been uh, very worthwhile. Yes, Sir Gerald. Well, I've just got your note. The situation didn't require quite such drastic measures. I think it did. I can't make you people out. I mean, here's Grant getting classified information fed to him, information of untold value to this company, uh, and now you... It's decide. the way to handle Stiles' sort. Tell them all you can quite openly. It disarms them. And how much did you tell him, Corbett? A good deal less than he'll get from Grant's file. It's a dangerous game. I mean, men like Stiles need expert handling. I didn't tell him anything he shouldn't know. He went away quite happy. Well, I hope you're right, Corbett, but you're playing with fire. Well, we're reasonably fireproof, Sir Gerald. All right, let's wait and see, shall we? Yes? Another press call. I said put them through to PR. I've been doing that, but this one says he knows you. You met at Farnborough. Who is it? Derek Anstey. All right, put him on. Hello, Derek. What the hell's going on down there? Fleet Street gone mad? No, Derek. No comment. Not even for you. Mr. Corbett's office. Oh, yes, Mr. Stride. Mr. Corbett said to put them through to your department. Oh, one moment, Mr. Stride. It's public relations. Yes, Stride. No, I don't know what it's all about. Well, just put them through the PR. If there's nothing else, Mr. Corbett. Just keep those press people off my back. I'm likely to be here rather than... Yes? Look, I told you before, say I've gone home.
Yes, I've got it. 6142. Look, Ellis, how many more times? No comment, is that clear? No comment. Yes. For God's sake, no, I'm not. Of course I deny it. It says you deny it, but what does that mean? They're pointing their fingers straight at you. Well, they're wrong. And everybody who matters will take the point. Or everyone who wants to will. Look, what's happened this morning is just the beginning. It's one thing to quieten the chairman temporarily, but quite another to satisfy the ministry. And what style is going to make of this other story Clifford's follow-up, hmm? He can really go to town now on this stability problem. Styles has got a lot more information than Clifford's got there. And where did he get that from? I'd say from the file you generously gave him yesterday. Or from what you told him down here. There's only one thing you can do now, and that's... Well, you can save your advice for a while. I've got a lot of technical work to get through today, so... Have you the faintest idea what's shaping up this morning now? Do you really know what you've started? There'll be the minister. His staff. Styles. Every air correspondent in the game all wanting answers today. Today I'm busy. Today who will be? If you can't show faith in your own aircraft, who else can? Don't forget I denied it. Yes, a denial that means guilty. How's that for a politician's logic? What am I supposed to do? Pretend it is me? And there's only one thing you can do. You've got to make a convincing public statement of faith in the aircraft. One that leaves no doubt, no suspicion. I'll draft it for you, if you like. And supporting the idea of an immediate production contract. Naturally. I don't support it. I know my aircraft does need another year's development first. As you told me the other day, and Clifford, no doubt, and Stiles yesterday, I don't know what technical evidence you have. That's just it. But politically, you'll have to get one idea into your head. It's Wilder's contract, and now or no contract at all. Yes. Is this a bit of your doing? Sir Gordon wants special demonstrations laid on for this afternoon for, well, let's get it right, the parliamentary secretary and a technical advisor. Well, uh, Sir Gordon is the chairman. And you were with him earlier. I told you it's just the beginning. Another way day down the pan. I want Bradley up here right away. Yes, of course. You know, I think you politicians have more time on your hands than the unemployed. If you're waiting for me to change my mind, don't. We could draft it now. It would make the evening papers and confuse Styles and his chums. Aren't you aware that only Wilder issues statements to the press from this office? There's always the chairman. Yes, well, I tell you what I'll do. I'll think about it. My answer will still be no. I'll be at my office when you change your mind. What now? All right, Miss Evans. Won't be long. Corbett wants to see me. Uh, what about? She didn't say. Uh, I'll go. You get on with this uh, flight test report. Are you sure? Yes, it'll be about the Vita. I'll leave it to me. Mr. Corbett's office, please. Switchboard. Cancel that call, will you? No, Mr. Stiles, it wasn't me. I denied it. There's no more to be said. No, I don't see any point in our meeting. Well, there it is. Bye. Where's Bradley? I told him to get on with a flight test report. Well, then you better tell him from me to get over here. 
Is it about the veto test schedule? None of your business what it's about. I think this makes it my business. Why wasn't this sent to me? It's addressed to the chief test pilot. Wilder sent this in complete ignorance of what you did on the VTOL yesterday. Nevertheless, he sent... So, he insists you're still in charge of the VTOL test flight. We have a most important demonstration flight laid on for this afternoon. It's crucial. It could mean make or break for the VTOL. You've no doubt been reading the papers these past couple of days. Well, the parliamentary secretary is coming down to see for himself. I want him to see how easy it is to land and take off. And you think Bradley would do it better? He will. Unfortunately, Mr. Corbett, you don't make that decision. I do. That is my authority. Authority to do what? To wreck the entire project to satisfy your own aging vanity or what? You've designed an aircraft that is difficult to fly. Don't question my ability as a pilot. I'm sure you're perfectly capable under normal conditions. What's abnormal about the routine testing of my 29th prototype? This is no routine flight. It's just about as special as you can get. Be reasonable, Forbes. The very thing they've got their eye on is the stability. And it defeated you yesterday, didn't it? I know what's at stake, Mr. Corbett. Thank you. Well, cheers. Cheers. No, I was just wondering if you'd found the file helpful. Or whether I'm going on with it. Well, are you? I'm calling another meeting of the group for this evening. But you're not inviting me. <laughs> Even if we did, you wouldn't get back in time. Hmm? Minister must be pretty worried to be sending Marlowe down this afternoon. Well, what else could he do after the row you've been making? Well, he obviously wants to find out more about this stability. And we all do. Stability is just Clifford blowing it up. Your file plays it down. Oh, so now you're saying I've given you a loaded version. Well, you're not getting me to say that. Then admit you've no case. There's plenty of smoke. I'll get to the fire. Now, what about Corbett? Oh, Corbett, you're wasting your time. Well, James, if the aircraft designer himself is behind it, you've had it. Well, you get yourself well wrapped up in parliamentary privilege before you try making anything of that. That's exactly what I thought you'd say. As a matter of fact, Corbett's getting out a statement now affirming his complete faith in the VTOP. The thing that seems to have eluded you, Fraser, is that I am not one for rushing things. I want this line right. Not some half-baked compromise that's going to land us in the cart later. I can see that, Mr. Corbett, but Sugden's plan won't be half-baked. Leave Sugden's plan to me. I can see what you're after, but... And what's that? Well... Well, out with it. All this business in the newspapers, you wanting another year in that. Eh? I was just reading between the lines. And what's your opinion? My opinion? Do you think we need another year's development work? Well, it's hard to say. Yes? A cable from Mr. Wilder, Mr. Corbett. One moment. All right, let's hear it, shall we? It says, make full statement of faith in veto. Stop. Today, stop. Or resign, stop. Wilder. Thank you, Miss Evans. No reply. Is the demonstration laid on for this afternoon? Yes, sir. Well, she's over there. Our chief test pilot, Mr. Forbes, the parliamentary secretary. We've met. How are you, Paul? How are you doing? And Mrs. Bradley, who's been with us all along on the VTOL. How do you do? How do you do, sir? This is my technical advisor, Mr. Glanville. Glanville? Shall we carry on with it? Yes, sir. Excuse me, Paul. Of course. Forbes. I'd be very grateful if you'd let Bradley take it. One bad landing and... I know. Douglas? 
Get in the front. You're taking her up. Well, they can't make much of this stability business after that. I'd still like to know why you invited yourself. Harlow's a politician, so am I. You see, I didn't convert him. You need all the political help you can get. I suppose you felt it politically expedient to advise Wilder. Well, who else? Light his notice off? You put him up to this say or resign bit. I said it's essential you make a statement. Bluff. All bluff. If I resign, the beat all's finished. You both it's finished if Wilder isn't given that production contract now. And by the way, I've drafted your statement. You know what you can do with that, don't you? It's for general press release, and as designer, you're saying, as designer of the VTOL, I am convinced that a production contract is essential now if this aircraft is to become an international success. Large-scale production for the RAF will give us the lead, which we must have. Any further delay is unnecessary and will prejudice the future of the VTOL. They'll know a PR man loves that, won't they? Thank you. I thought we might see you flying it, Forbes. Oh, we wanted you uh, to see that it wasn't necessary for a te chief test pilot to fly. <laughs> I uh, took a back seat for change. Still, you, you won't deny that you've had stability problems. Oh, no, and there are still snags to iron out, but nothing that isn't routine. Well, the whole thing's been blown up out of all proportion. Mr. Forbes? No, thank you. Uh, Forbes is telling me that this whole stability problem has been exaggerated. Well, he should know. I hope you feel your visit's been worthwhile. Well, let me say that I feel happier now than I was before I came. I think that goes for Glanville, too. Uh, Corbett, I've only got one question for you. Yes. Can you assure me that you personally don't believe that you need more development time? You? Personally? I don't know where this started, but... Well? Do you? No, no. We're ready for production. Excuse me. Yes, of course. Yes? Sir Gerald Lowe calling, Mr. Corbett. I'll ring him back. Phone it through sometime this evening. We want to catch the morning papers. 